right, thanks for uh, being here. We are so uh, so glad uh, you're on board and it's really to discuss uh, how space uh, technology can help uh, building a more sustainable world um, in terms of mobility, energy, and so on. By the time everyone is here, um, I propose that we are going to make some interaction together. So we have we are going to move quickly quickly on on Slido, so that we are able to better know you, who you are, where you're from, and so on. So I guess you see my screen now. Um, you just need to go on a, on a Slido. Uh, I think uh, Antoine will uh, copy past the link uh, on the chat. And once you arrive on, on Slido, you just need to add the, the code. You can see uh, on my screen. And, uh, and then uh, we can start uh, chatting and, and uh, get to know where you're from, who you are, and so on. All right, cool. So nice to see people from uh, all around the world, at least all around Europe and, and some uh, very far country. Cool. Maybe you can switch to the, to the next question you now to, uh, to, uh, to understand uh, if it's your first uh, AGSC event or if you are uh, a long, uh, long term uh, aficionado of, of AGSC. 10 plus, wow. Okay, we have some newbies here. First time ever. Cool. Okay, so uh, now we are more than 45 people in the room. That's cool. Maybe we can wait, let's say, a few minutes more and then start the, the webinar. Cool. Okay, let's go for the next question. Well, what, what do you do for a living, guys? Uh, in what field do you work? Or uh, what do you study? We are so, uh, so slid to, to know that about you. Medicine, computer science. Awesome. Engineering, engineering, aerospace, for sure. Event. Astrophysics. Wow. Pretty yeah. impressive. I'm wondering if we are the experts or they are. You know what I mean, <laughs> Valentin? Um, I would say both. <laughs> I don't Lunar exploration hear, robotics. I don't want to hurt the well. feeling of anyone there. So I would say everyone is its own expert in its in own field. And there's a chemist, a law student. Amazing. Okay, Ariane is in the place. Cool. Maybe we got some people from a big, uh, big company such as Thales, Ariane, Airbus, SpaceX, Virgin. So on. That's so nice. Okay, and uh, last but not least, the most important question ever: <laughs> Will you be there on the third of July with us on in Lille? It's fine. It's fine if you're not. No worries about that. But most of, uh, I guess, some of the people who are going to attend the event are about to uh, to participate in that uh, that webinar, and that's cool because we got some uh, some great feedback and uh, and materials to uh, to prepare uh, the best of uh, of the webinar and uh, and the roundtable uh, on the third of July. Cool. And I guess you wouldn't be mad at at the people that wouldn't fly over from Pakistan or Thailand, right? <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> All right. All right, awesome. That's so nice. Okay, so I think we can now start the, the webinar. So let me get back to this main, main screen. I'm going to uh, present the webinar. Do you guys see now the, the slides? Yes. I think, yes. Awesome. OK, so now it's uh, thank you so much, guys. It was so cool to, uh, to know you better and to, uh, to see how, where you're from and what you do. And uh, now I will, let, uh, I will let Tanya, head of uh, SG France 2021, to, uh, to present the, the webinar of today. Thank you. Uh, so yes, next slide, please, Valentin. Sure. 
so I'm, uh, I'm Tania, I'm the event manager of uh, SG France 2021. And uh, just for the, the next five minutes, I'm just going to talk to you a bit more about SGAC and uh, SGAC in France and SG France uh, that is going to happen soon. So concerning SGAC, it's already in here. Um, so it's basically a non-governmental, uh, non-profit organization, uh, which is like a big network of uh, young professionals and students that love space, but they come from very different backgrounds. They can come from engineering, law, uh, medicine, etc., as we saw just before. Um, so today we are more than uh, 15,000 members, uh, as we can see here, and uh, it, it keeps growing and uh, it's an amazing opportunity to, uh, to, to meet people uh, that are, have the same passion as you and uh, come from very different places. So next slide, please. Uh, concerning the activities of uh, SGAC, um, so you can have a few here. Um, so mainly we are uh, doing some events uh, at different scales. So those are some events like worldwide, uh, for example, the SGC or the SGFF uh, taking place each year uh, in the same uh, city, sorry, uh, than the IAC, International Astronautical Congress. And uh, you also have some uh, more uh, local events like SG France, which is going to happen soon, or SG Germany, or like at the, the country uh, scale. Uh, if you don't want to do events, but you prefer working on some uh, cool projects, uh, there are today a number of 11 uh, project groups to work on. It can go from, again, space low space the scenes, uh, space exploration, um, uh, gender equality in the space field, etc. So very interesting project to work on. Uh, you also have some professional development by the, the network that you can make here. You also have some mentorship opportunities uh, to, uh, to, to, to benefit from. Uh, you can also get some scholarship to attend some events and uh, to, uh, to take part of some uh, space courses in uh, space universities, etc. And finally, you have the uh, United Nations related activities, because this is the, the main objective of uh, SGAC is to represent the voice of uh, the young generation in space, basically. So this is why we have some uh, United Nations uh, uh, activities. So next slide, please. Now I'm going to talk to you a bit more about SGAC in France. Um, so we have a growing community of uh, more than 230 uh, people, and uh, it's also uh, very cool to, uh, to, to meet uh, fellow uh, space enthusiasts uh, from SGAC here in France. So SG France 2021 is going to be the third event uh, organized in France. Uh, so there have been already one in Paris, one in Toulouse last year, and uh, the next one in Lille in a few, few weeks now uh, that I'm going to present on the slide just after. Uh, so SG France 2021 is going to be an event uh, that tackles the subject of the synergies between space and non-space sector and, and how basically to bring more space in our daily life and how to, um, to find some more collaborations and some more ideas uh, to gather those, uh, those fields together. Um, so uh, last week we had a webinar organized by Marine uh, on the subject of our first roundtable, which was about climate change. And today, uh, the webinar we're uh, talking about is about sustainable development, and we have uh, three fantastic experts talking about this subject. So stay tuned for the future uh, webinars that are going to happen in the next weeks, uh, tackling then the last uh, two roundtables of our event. And finally, last slide. Um, so uh, this one to talk a bit more about the events, uh, the space events that are going to happen uh, soon and around SG France. Um, so you have the SpaceCon taking place few weeks before. Uh, the first part is going to be a one-day uh, event, a uh, contest of Kerbal Space Program uh, for a trajectory analysis uh, uh, fan on the 19th of June, uh, where you can get uh, you can participate as a team and uh, try to get a reward from it. And you also have uh, on the 24th of June, so the week before SG France, uh, a more formal uh, event. Uh, which is going to be more like conferences, talks, and, uh, and uh, sponsors, um, visits, etc. You can talk with many people there. Uh, considering the second event, uh, which is taking place right after uh, our event, is going to be the Summer Space Festival, uh, where Antoine, uh, which is here, is the event manager. And uh, if you don't know uh, what else to do uh, on, the, on the weekend uh, of SG France in Lille, you can go to the, the Summer Space Festival because we are all going to be there. Uh, on the 4th of July then, and it's a, a free event uh, that you can attend or on ground or online. Uh, that is going to be kind of the same format as SG France, uh, but with different uh, speakers and different sponsors, etc. So it's going to be uh, very interesting as well. So this is all for me, and I wish you a, a great webinar, the team.
Thank you, Tanya. So let's continue with uh, this webinar by introducing our guests and experts. So we have a great mix uh, between uh, technology experts, space experts, uh, sustainability experts, from space and non-space sectors, which is great, actually. So first, I would like to uh, present uh, Astrid Cousteau, who is the uh, Chief Commercial Officer of Kineis, um, the most uh, advanced uh, French IoT space constellation. She's the, the perfect person to uh, discuss uh, with us about use case uh, of space IoT in, uh, in terms of energy and mobility. Uh, then we have Eric Brel, uh, who is a, a sectoral expert at CNES. Uh, the French uh, Space Agency. Um, he has a great background and uh, knowledge regarding uh, sustainable development policy, rain, uh, trail, and marine uh, mobility, and territory space uh, application businesses. And uh, finally, uh, Ricardo Poeta, who is a, a consultant at uh, the European Commission, uh, especially as a co-leader of the IMET initiative. IMET uh, stands for uh, the Intelligent uh, Mobility and uh, Energy Transition. So thank you. Uh, uh, to all three for being with us uh, today. Uh, we appreciate it a lot. And uh, by the way, these uh, three experts will be there uh, uh, on the 3rd of July. So uh, guys, you, you be free to ask your questions through the, through the chat uh, so, so that they can prepare it the, the better, the, the rentable, and they will replay it uh, at the end of, of this webinar. And by the way, just be informed that this webinar is registered so that we can uh, later uh, publish it on the, on the social media. So before uh, they will start their presentation, I would like to briefly introduce uh, sustainable uh, development topics uh, because it's a very wide and, uh, and common term. And I think we need to narrow uh, it a little bit in order to, to guide our discussion and to, uh, to tackle a specific, uh, specific uh, aspect. So officially, uh, sustainable development uh, refers to um, development that meets the needs of the person without compromising. The, um, the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. Uh, sustainability is at the very cross center uh, between economical, social, and, and ecological sphere, as you can see on the left. So the, um, the, 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 there is a lot of impacts in our daily life everywhere. Uh, speaking of that, um, the, the, the United Nations set uh, 17 uh, sustainable goals for humanity. Uh, and it goes from zero poverty to uh, zero waste uh, to sustainable cities and uh, all clear energy. Uh, so I really encourage you to, uh, to check the, 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 these uh, sustainable goals. Um, and what's fascinating about space is that space services and data uh, of observation, of telecommunication and geolocation have a key role to play in most, uh, if not all, of these uh, 17 uh, sustainable goals. So in, in order to, um, to keep a coherence and be able to go deeper uh, into some specific topics, uh, we decided to focus this roundtable um, and, and the webinar on mobility, energy, and, uh, and smart uh, territories. So now I will let uh, Astrid uh, introduce her subject and uh, feel free to ask uh, all of your questions through the, through the chat. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, join you today for my uh, first webinar with you, uh, first experience, but uh, very glad to share my different uh, experience, not only in space industry, but also in energy industry. We can move to the next. So, uh, Kinis is combining the best of new space uh, and IoT. So, we are the first. Uh, European constellation dedicated uh, to IoT, uh, Internet of Things um, applications. So who are we and what are we doing? So uh, we are a satellite operator and global connectivity provider. Uh, our legacy, uh, the CNES, the French Space Agency, uh, and CNES, um, uh, with over 40 years of experience in data collection. So they were collecting data with space applications already since the early 80s, even far uh, before uh, GPS um, technology exists. We have been created in 2018, uh, and last year uh, we had this historical fundraising of 100 million uh, uh, euros. Uh, and uh, we launched this full constellation of 25 nanosatellites dedicated to IoT um, in 2023. So you can see the historical timeline in, in the bottom. So we're not a new company. We are spin-off of uh, CLS and supported, of course, by the French Space Agency. 
Um, a small key element is that we entered into um, French Tech Next 40 um, in the beginning of this year. Next page, please. Uh, okay. Um, so we are a satellite operator. Uh, today we are already fully operational. Uh, we have uh, eight existing uh, payloads on uh, historical satellites. So we can already roll out our services uh, today for IoT applications. We are complementing with ground uh, telecom networks to pick up the information as quick as uh, possible. We have no roaming issues like a telco. So we're like a telco, but our infrastructure is in space. Today we have um, revisit time to collect the data of one and a half hours. Uh, in 2023, that will be less than 15 minutes wherever the place you are on Earth. Uh, that means no, no blind spots, no uh, areas without access to connectivity. We're operating in frequencies licenses uh, in UHF band uh, 400 megahertz. We supply two-way communication, so it's uplink and downlink. And we will launch also a new um, um, IS system for security uh, applications, uh, maritime security applications. Next page, uh, please. So what we tell, we are a telco operator. Our, net, uh, our infrastructure is in space and we supply connectivity dedicated um, for IoT. Today, we already have 20,000 active devices worldwide. Uh, supplying two-way communications, uplink and downlink, IoT, so which means, let's say, small messages for about 30 bytes, low transmission power, um, 100 milliwatts, and low consumption. So that means uh, you have an autonomy of the device as long as possible because, uh, let's say, the, the power to transmit to, to the satellite is very, very low. And we have our native location, uh, location via Doppler effect. And we can make very, very small devices. The smallest device is the size of only a few centimeters and only five grams. So we have this global system covering every single spot on the planet, IoT dedicated, low consumption, and very easy to integrate into active devices. What, what can you do with space IO connectivity? So what I already said, comparing to all the other technologies, if, you, if I give you an example, uh, today only 15% of the planet is covered by terrestrial networks. That means that every other spot of the Earth is left without, by, uh, without connectivity. You can track and locate uh, with, uh, let's say, a native location service. We collect data, typically 30 bytes messages. It's compatible with all the different sensors, IoT sensors on the market. We can use with alerting, device control, and two-way communication. So we also can address devices everywhere they are based on the Earth uh, by sending a message from the satellite to the device. And we work also on combined technologies, what we call hybridization with existing technology networks. So get your data wherever you are in less than 15 minutes. Next page, please. So which applications? So um, as the introduction, we're talking about sustainable goals. We, in, in, in fact, we address several sustainable goals. So I will enter into the energy market today in this webinar. Where it's, let's say historically, we're addressing the scientific and the environmental um, applications uh, with our partner CLS, and also the maritime uh, applications like uh, small scale fisheries, which are uh, historically already, already addressed by, uh, by CLS. And then we combine with new I IoT applications uh, like network and infrastructure. There is where I'm going to speak about uh, energy markets because you can um, monitor uh, the utility networks to optimize the energy use. I will get back to that later. And also optimize tra transport and logistics. And we also have this smart agriculture thing where we optimize, let's say, uh, everything that's linked to agriculture applications. And then humanitarian things. And the last activity is outdoor activity, sports activity in extreme uh, outdoor climatic conditions. Next page, please. So we we'll get to the energy markets. Uh, that's where uh, I have some feedback and, uh, and I've been working for 23 years into energy, uh, energy industry uh, and, and, and let's say the energy distribution in industry. So historical, uh, let's say, People were just 
inquiry for energy. Since several years, people, also individual producers, can produce energy. If we are looking at renewables, if we are looking at smart grid management or off-grid management, this means that the networks are changing. And to optimize all these, uh, to protect the planet, to have a sustainable uh, roadmap of energy production, we can implement space technology to monitoring the utility networks. So we see some examples here. It's also for, let's say, uh, risk and safety management of the worker. Uh, it is also about predictive ma maintenance. How to prevent to uh, uh, network uh, uh, technical problems, alert in case of fault, fault detection. Everything that's linked to optimize the, en uh, the energy grid today. Next day, please. So here I give you uh, an example uh, of a benefit on fault detection on aerial energy networks. That means that we can improve definitely energy efficiency, not producing energy when it's not needed, inject energy when it's required. And if there are any faults, we can monitor this by, let's say, space technology, especially in remote areas where there are a lot of aerial networks and where there are no existing, uh, existing technology or no network available. So you can see at the right side, some criteria that are used today to monitor efficient grid management. So of course there are existing technologies we can combine with existing technologies and we can offer solutions where you have the best of each network. That means it can be cellular uh, by telco uh, applications or terrestrial networks, but you can combine with terrestrial um, and satellite to cover every single place, to be sure that you pick up the information on the right moment, in the right place, and to prevent uh, grid management uh, problems. Next page, please. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm available later if you have any further questions about, uh, about uh, KINES and, uh, and IoT space technology. Thank you very much, Astrid. Uh... I guess now it's uh, the turn to uh, Eric to come uh, to come on stage. Hello, good, good afternoon, everyone. Go, uh, Valentin. Yes. Uh, if you are here, it's because you have you are. Oh no, excuse me. If you are here, it's because you all have the same dream. For CNES, the French Space Agency, this dream is now a strategic mission to provide French institutions with space instruments and means of transport to carry out their societal activities in the earth and universe sciences and for defense. With the next, please. With the birth of a new space age, CNES decides decided to facilitate the transfer of space data and services to enhance all the other socio-economic socio sectors. So we have created the Connect Bikeness program with the goal in orange here and three priorities, environment, mobility, and health. Connect Bikeness takes advantage of its position as a state organization to offer all types of actors, startups, large groups, institutions, five services, expertise acquired after 50 years in CommSat navigation and earth observation, acceleration and incubation, support of the financing of companies and projects, training and promotion. In the field of, of mobility, in the field of mobility, we have engaged through Connect Bikeness two different cooperations. One based on the PPP solution linked to the Galileo GNSS system in the log 4 rail project led by XBlue, meeting the needs of SNCF. Other with different ship owners in the direction of the autonomous maritime surface ship. For this 
partnership in the maritime sector, the central idea is to optimize the routing of the ship, its energy consumption, and its greenhouse gas emissions by calculating an economically efficient route for the boat that uses the force of sea currents, the blast of the wind, and surfing the waves. French scientists and space industrials are leaders in the oceanography thanks to partnerships in all space altimetry missions. But the efficient missions are not enough to provide almost real information to economic operators. More satellites are needed in a constellation to give a sufficiently operational service, increase the number of free visits to have information of less than an hour. More satellites are needed in a constellation to give a sufficiently operational service. Increase the number of free visits to have information of less than an hour. Oh, I see it's two, two times this one. Ah, for that, it's necessary to think to a private public solution to fill this lake of space missions. Maybe we found one. We have to solve now the economic equation of investments so that they agree to accompany us. After, after the routing, the other challenge for Mars is that human activities, mobility and infrastructures are in complete harmony with the environment and biodiversity. Earth observation is one of the keys all around the planet. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, that was uh, fascinating. And now I think it's the turn of, uh, of Ricardo. Here we are. Hi, everyone. Yes, uh, Valentine mentioned I'm here representing the Smart Cities market Marketplace. Uh, yeah, well, basically, I think the name says it all. Uh, it's a platform that aims at bringing cities, industries, SMEs, investors, researchers, and all, all the other stakeholders uh, together. Uh, everyone that is interested in, in working in, uh, well, smart cities and everything it involves. Can I have the next slide, please? It is comprised, I, I will not do a big introduction about that, it's just, just to understand how it is organized. A, you know, there are different six different clusters and each cluster has in what we call initiatives. Basically, they are working groups. And the one I, I am co-lead of, please, next slide, is the IMET. Um, basically, the, yes, the next slide, thank you. So basically, this was, this picture uh, um, is a good overview of what the IMET project was about. You know, it was, it was about stimulating uh, electromobility and the infrastructure of it. So in this case, you know, this, this, in this specific case, you would see that, for example, the car would actually be kind of a power bank for your home. So the whole day you would be at work commuting. When you come back, the car would be charged and, um, you know, would, would uh, make use of that battery to, to fulfill the energy needs of the house. Um, yes, please continue. Thank you. Yes, yes, Valentin, you're a good one. Um, so this is an overview of all the projects that, that were kind of ambassadors of the initiative. I'm not going to detail with that. Um, what I want actually to do with you is a bit more looking at, you know, ethics and sustainability. Uh, what, what is, well, I mean, Valente described it, but you also need to think about it from a global point of view. We have also another uh, cluster, another initiative within, within the Smart Cities Marketplace that is more focused actually on geospatial cities. Can you please go to the next slide, which is this one. Um, and actually they are also involved in a lot of different projects and have everything to do with, with uh, geospatial information and the space industry. I will just show you a quick one uh, very quickly, which is the Cure. Um, can, can you please go to the next slide? <laughs> yes, thank you, which is basically uh, an aggregator um, of all the Copernicus services um and what they want to do with that is actually uh explore um uh, uh i'm sorry i haven't spoken english in a while but um yes 
So what they want to do with that is use these uh, geospatial information, correlate them, aggregate them, correlate them in order to, to be able to provide services to public entities. Um, so such as this one, for example, uh, I don't know if a lot of you are, are, are known with that, but the, the surface temperature is actually one of the most important parameters in the physical processes of the urban surface energy and water balance, you know. So um, by having like a real time um, uh, overview of the surface temperature, cities and, and local authorities can anticipate uh, problems in emergency situations. The same, uh, same goes for flooding, for floods, for example. The next slide, please. Um, they are, so basically they are using these services in order to, to predict when there are floods. So these are just some experiences, but some, some examples, for, sorry. But what I want to say is, yes, let's focus on ethics. So for example, this is the case for e-mobility, but also for the space industry. Let's look at the whole supply chain here, you know? Um, so let's go to the mineral extraction level. You know, we need, we need metals and minerals in order to, to create batteries and all, and all um, tech gadgets and everything. Uh, just to give you a small a couple of examples, cobalt, I don't know if you know it, but 60% of it, come, come go back, please go back. <laughs> 60% of, uh, of the cobalt in the world comes from Congo. And unfortunately, most of the miners work and, and live in terrible, life-threatening situations. Most of them are being very poorly paid, if they are paid at all, you know. Uh, lithium extraction re also requires huge amount of water um, and has been, you know, also reported to have uh, polluted many areas, such as in Bolivia. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Also, like energy, all all these processes, you know, mineral extraction, uh, but also uh, manufacturing of all these um, all these devices requires a lot of energy. And unfortunately, uh, most of our energy is still is still provided by coal in this world, which is the deadliest, as you can see on this uh, on this line, which is the deadliest um, uh, source actually of energy. Uh, so you know, to the earth, it doesn't actually matter if you pollute in Europe or you know in the south or in the east in the north of the west of the planet uh, the truth is that if you pollute you pollute can i go to the next slide please and this is also the case for recycling you know so europe is is quite at the forefront of of recycling uh, especially batteries um but also other metal and materials but again uh, there are lots of places in the world which uh, which are not doing that and again uh, polluting here or somewhere else in the world it won't matter to the earth and it won't matter for climate change. So we really need to think about that. And, also, and I'm, I'm actually also wondering if you, if you guys have um, uh, have some examples that you can, uh, you know, relate to that. Um, so, but we, we can discuss that afterwards. Can you please go to the next slide? Also, what I, um, well, one of my specialties is also behavior change, you know, and behavior. And also what I want to, to think about it, because you are probably the future architects and engineers um, of this planet on, um, and urban planning. So you will need to think about that. So this is actually a bad example of how you can uh, um, motivate behavior change, uh, but they, let's say the hard way. I'm wondering, is anybody known with, uh, does anybody know Robert Moses, who he was? Yes, I'll give you a hint, New York, somewhere in New York. No, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, Robert Moses uh, worked as a public official uh, in the New York metropolitan area in the mid 20th century. And he was very racist. He really hated, <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that, but he really hated uh, people from color, Hispanic and, and he would love to go to the beach, you know, but every time he would get actually irritated to see so many, uh, so many blacks and Hispanics at the beach. So he just thought, you know what, uh, I'm going to build some bridges so that the buses can't go through because he understood that most of these people were just taking the local bus. Um, so this is uh, obviously a bad example, but can you go to the next slide, but you can obviously do it uh, differently. So instead of doing it the hard way, uh, to offer options, you know, to citizens, to, nah, nah, sorry, I need to drink some water. <laughs> but you can also offer options to your citizens uh, and trying to stimulate good behavior. You know, this is an example. 
uh, in the Netherlands, where you know uh, this this alone has has uh, been able to to reduce public loitering. You know these small examples, which are actually pretty pretty easy and cheap to implement. Can you go to the next slide, please? I'm wondering, does anybody know what this uh, represents? Any answers? Uh, Tanya, I believe you put it on the um, on the poll or not? Um, people go raise their hand actually if uh, okay. they can find out. So if uh, any of you guys have an idea of uh, what that graph means and what it represents, you can either raise your hand or write it down in the chat. Yeah, I'm curious to know if everybody, you know, and see the possible answers. That's, it could be quite funny. I have no idea personally. <laughs> oh, I see some answers in the chat. Let me check. Oh, Francis no, I was content saying, don't hesitate to ask your questions to the expert. Yeah. Anyway, so no idea. I have to go on, guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, no, this is basic, this is uh, um, the the rate of organ donors uh, among all these countries. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean, you know, that, that Germans or British are, are well, are, do, are not willing to donate their organs, but it's just the, the whole architecture is is different in these countries so basically in the countries on the left you have a opt-out system and uh which opt-out not opt-in system sorry which basically means that by default you're not an organ, do organ donor but if you send them you know you need to send them a letter saying yes i'm willing to donate my organs at the end of my life uh on the right side it's an opt-out situation so you need Yes, I know this. This is a bit outdated. You're right, uh, Johnny. UK has changed to opt out now. I know. I know the Netherlands as well. By the way, it's, it's also represented there. I mean, it also changed recently, but but yes. So it's exactly that. So basically, by just changing the architecture and the default option, you know, you are able to, to change dramatically uh, people's behavior. Can I next the next slide, please? This is also another example. Of, of small nudges they can do in order to, you know, like nowadays people are often walking on their phones. Um, there have been some more accidents due to that. And, you know, by looking down and you see this right and great. Anyway, I, I, I'm looking forward to tell you more about, you know, behavior change, uh, um, eventually ethics um, uh, on the next event. Uh, just, it was just to give you uh, just, uh, yeah, a small, uh, how do you say, a small smell, you would say like this in Portuguese, but you know what I mean, um, of what, what is to come. Um, so yeah, just, just this is one of the models we use in Behavior Change, there are many models, it's a very complex and multidisciplinary area, uh, but this is one of them that if you want to simulate certain uh, behavior, you need to have the right architecture in place, you need that people have the, the necessary skills and competencies in order to, to do that, that behavior, sorry. And they also need to be aligned there with their with their drivers, personal drivers, social drivers. So and just yeah. a question, uh, Ricardo. But yes, just coming up, popping up. Um, why would you uh, place uh, space technology and uh, and services in that uh, in that model? Oh, that's a good question. Can I just finish and then I, I can answer that? Yes, that's a really good uh, really good <laughs> question. Thanks. Um, yeah, so just as I said, um, you know, I, I recently uh, have a postgrad in, in behavior change, and I'm specializing specializing in this area. Um, and I'm also a facilitator of events. Um, I'm, I also give uh, public speaking uh, uh, formations. Uh, anyway, if you are interested in anything, just uh, stay in touch. Here are my my contact details. And thank you. And now let's uh, try to to answer that question. Well. Obviously depends on which, uh, so, so yes, so obviously, um, I mean, it depends on which, which kind of uh, service or specific use case we are talking about, you know, I mean, if it's space like, um, we're talking about deep space, you're trying to sense, I don't, I, this is something totally unknown and it's, it's not, it's not, you're not gonna, how do you say that directly influence the behavior of people, uh, on earth, you know, which is, which is what we want. Um, but for example, so imagine that for public authorities, yes, if they would have like, uh, how do you say that? Uh, if and this already happens for a long time, like having having access to a live feed, you know, seeing everything and having an overview 
this is a, this is an example of architecture because we are very visual creatures so instead of having data that is just coming you know you make a good overview of a map and you can map everything that you have your you know all your efficiencies in place and, and you can do strategy from that does it kind of answer your question or i mean depending on the use case obviously it's, it's quite a wide yeah, yeah but it uh, it's answering okay. thanks <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much, Ricardo, uh, Astrid, and, and Eric. Uh, now we're going to switch to the legendary uh, SGS quiz time. Uh, people are coming back. Glad to have you back, guys. How was it? You can, uh, you can uh, share your, your, your feelings uh, on the chat. Was it hard? Was it easy? Uh, did, you, uh, did you get some uh, new, uh, new, new, new stuff you didn't know before? Let us know. Now we start my screen by the time. <laughs> Easier than next time. Give it done. Okay, so now we're gonna start the QA question. Yep. So guys, I don't have access to the chat, but I hope some of you guys have a have access to the chat, so be feel free to uh, to send uh, some of some question, and uh, and I will uh, I will split them to the to the experts. Okay, so we got some question there. Let me check it out. So we got a question for uh, for Astrid from Kinais for space solution to be more used over traditional terrestrial terrestrial solution. We often hear that they must be more affordable. Do you see application or sectors where there is already the case affordable IoT? What's next? Um, so if I get the question is that say uh, you still have the idea that let's say space is not uh, for affordable comparing to terrestrial IoT? Is that the question I get? And, and yeah. what's the picture about that? Um, for space solution to more even terrestrial solution, we often hear that they must be more affordable. Okay, so this is really the key argument about, let's say, new space companies. Uh, you have this, let's say, uh, historical um, broadband services, which are quite expensive with huge equipment and, and let's say, where you need to have a power supply. Uh, the new space is, let's say, what we call democracy democratizing uh, space connectivity. So our target is to get as close as possible to um, terrestrial pricing um, with, uh, let's say, um, devices that are uh, close to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, terrestrial devices in pricing. So we are, are, are working on that. So uh, let's say, I must say that today, let's say new space technology, IoT sp uh, technology, is, is really affordable and uh, is close to terrestrial uh, connectivity. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Astrid. Um, we got another question for uh, Ricardo, uh, which is focused on smart cities. Um, the question is, which unique and it value are space infrastructures bringing to smart cities? So if you could uh, highlight some Specific case in, in terms of smart cities. Yes, well, first one, one of the one one of the uses that has been there for a really long time, but sometimes people don't even realize, just the GPS system, you know. So this has increased uh, mobility and, and decreased, and it's still decreasing traffic all around the world. Imagine we wouldn't have GPS, how it would be even more chaotic, like in many cities it's already chaotic. Uh, but this is just uh, this is just one of the examples. But I mean, now with you know the the, the technology is becoming cheaper and cheaper. We've we've got micro satellites being launched all over. Uh, Europe is investing a lot in that. Even uh, national space agencies in Europe are investing in that. You know, so we will have soon access to really reliable uh, uh, data for an affordable price. Uh, and imagine the possibilities they are. Like for example, in Amsterdam, they are they are using uh, geospatial imaging uh, to predict uh, when their bridges, you know, will need maintenance, which which spares them a lot of money just because of that. It's just one of the uh, the examples. They are they are and like there is, uh, so, there is a lot of bridges. There are a lot of bridges in Amsterdam. <laughs> there's a lot of what of bridges. 
a, a lot of bridges, you know, a lot, of, definitely hundreds, I think more than a thousand, I'm not sure, but anyway, a lot of bridges. Um, and not only that, they are also using it, for example, to in cities to uh, to measure where the sun shines the most, you know, where where would be the best places to to put solar panels, where we'd get the most efficiency. So all these small uh, uh, services can really help uh, uh, building, you know, and, and, and uh, developing uh, sustainable cities. OK, does that, does that answer the question? I guess so. <laughs> let's, uh, let's ask the the crowd. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks a lot. Um, another question for uh, for Astrid uh, about humanitarian application. How can this work in that? And it's uh, usually with ONG. So how yes. on your side the IoT help humanitarian mission? Yes, it's definitely uh, usually with ONGs. Uh, let's say the use cases we have on humanitarian, uh, let's say, applications is uh, you can do optimization of their assets and uh, tracking and logistics. Uh, I give you an example. If you need to get, uh, let's say, a power generators to a refugee camp or something like that, uh, you probably would like to have a last mile uh, traceability of the equipment and also, let's say, for security reasons to be, there is a lot of theft uh, also as well. So you would like to have some kind of traceability of what you're, what you're shipping and, and, and do some kind of uh, logistic tracking uh, on that. That's one of the use cases, but of course you have other use cases as well. Okay, very, uh, very clear. Thanks a lot. Okay, um, we got a question for Eric. How do you make non-space industries, such as train company, uh, of the value asset could have for their activity? So in other words, maybe, Eric, you could uh, tell us in English or in French, if you want, what you did with uh, SNCF regarding train and space uh, application. Uh, I try in English. And if yeah. it's no, no good, I, I switch to French. Yeah. So with, is, uh, with, sorry, with Rick, there was a missing word. It's uh, how do you make space, uh, non-space industrial aware of the value of, of space assets? Sorry, there was a missing word here. Je pourrais avoir une petite traduction. Ça me permettrait de pas faire de En, en gros, la question c'est comment vous utilisez euh, les techno spatiales dans des secteurs industriels, et principalement, il y avait l'exemple du train qui était donné. OK. Euh, de, on, on, dé, on développe nos partenariats au travers de nos trois métiers, euh, comme ça, navigation et Earth Observation. And for, for train, for example, we, we don't use uh, comme ça because uh, there is uh, too many obstacles. Uh, uh, there is vegetation and uh, uh, tunnels and so on to and uh, communication is not easy but uh, the, the, the train need uh, uh, GNSS uh, very precise GNSS uh, information to, to be sure that uh, there is not uh, another train before before him or, or, um, and um, SNCF want to know on one on what on the world, uh, what way the train is. Okay. Uh, SNCF veut savoir exactement sur quel rail est le train, et ce, surtout quand euh, il rentre dans des gares ou quand il y a plusieurs euh, voies en parallèle. Et l'observation de la Terre sert beaucoup pour repérer tous les glissements de terrain qui peuvent euh, abîmer le, le réseau, voire euh, détecter des obstacles sur, les, sur le train, sur le, sur le rail. OK, thanks a lot. So basically, it's, uh, it's also about maintenance, uh, kind of the same use that um, that uh, Ricardo highlighted for uh, for bridges, and but it's now used for uh, trail networks. And uh, SNCF, one of the major uh, public train company in France, is using Earth observation for uh, for uh, observing a trail network and uh, and preventing some uh, damage uh, due to uh, natural disaster or, or uh, use uh, use of the, the networks. Thanks a lot, uh, Eric. Okay, uh, what do we got? There. Um, okay, so there, there is a very uh, prospective question for Kinais, uh, highlighting that ISA is working on uh, on GNSS and uh, observation constellation around the moon. Do you see any IoT constellation soon for a moon application or a moon exploration? Uh, 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. It's something we really spoke about not a long time ago, but I think that's still, well, let's say it's, it's, think, it's things people think about. But uh, the question we have is, uh, let's say, if you want to move this kind of equipment from Earth to the moon, you imagine the power that's needed and, and for, to, to lift the weight um, to the moon. So yes. let's say uh, I will get the question back. If you if, if you need a lot of power, which is the equivalent of let's say the the, 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 the power manufacturing worldwide to get this kind of items uh, above our heads, uh, how could we imagine to uh, build satellites and local infrastructures on the moon, not to ship them from from Earth? Up there, and is it really sustainable if we do that? Yeah, we'll see. Our new future will uh, will tell us. <laughs> um, okay, another question for uh, for Ricardo. Um, you've been working at a different level at the uh, European Commission. Um, how would you assess the knowledge and the awareness about space technology and services at the European Commission? Uh, in this is being recorded, community? right? This uh, is being recorded. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you can. Yeah, so you I'm kidding. Have... I'm kidding. <laughs> How would I assess that? Um, within the European, the thing is, I, look, I, I, uh, I'm not like you know, the, the, someone that knows everybody uh, within the European Commission. It's a huge organization. I know, you know, uh, people from DG Move, Director General Move, which for mobility, uh, also DG Energy, you know, and some other Director General, but I wouldn't say I know a lot of people from, uh, especially not in this area, in space, the European Commission. What I can tell you, though, is that Europe has huge ambitions uh, regarding space. Um, they understand the, the potential of it, uh, you know, not only for, for, for the society, but also uh, for the economy. Uh, and again, uh, they are not only like investing a lot in the uh, ESA, European Space Agency, but also uh, um, stimulating uh, other other com other other countries, European countries, to create their own. Which and some of them have already done it, you know. And uh, the thing is, we have very very uh, competent people all around. And if we don't, we we hire them, and, and that's actually a big power of Europe because we have great uh, economic social conditions in uh, in our continent and a lot of people would would love to to be coming and living here for now you know you never know if a war breaks out someday then things are different but um so i would say we are we are in good hands okay good news glad to hear that and um, maybe the last question before the end of the webinar because we have five minutes left um it's for uh, for you uh, astrid regarding uh, energy distribution do you have any idea of the gain of efficiency okay, using IoT? How do you assess the, yeah, the, the gap uh, gain you, you've made through your technology? Do you have an idea of the gain efficiency using uh, IoT? Uh, well, I don't have exact figures about that, but every utility has the exact figures of the areas that are left without connectivity, something they cannot uh, monitor remotely, and the impact that, and the cost that have on their networks, which is uh, quite considerable. Um, so there are many uh, different uh, applications. So we have more and more off-grid uh, solutions uh, where they are in remote areas where I mean, you have absolutely no network available and they want to optimize, uh, let's say, the energy distribution. So the gain efficiency, I don't have any exact pictures, but uh, I know that each utility knows which area is left behind and the percentage of their network they cannot address through uh, historical networks. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you very much for, for your answers. Unfortunately, we couldn't answer, answer all of the questions, but uh, we can note them and then uh, reply, uh, ask them uh, uh, by writing to the expert and then uh, send them back to the, to the owner of the question. No. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. We, uh, we are now at the end of this webinar. It was a pleasure to have you there and to have you on board. Uh, it's, a, it's a key milestone for us in, a, in our great journey as HGSC, and we'll, um, we, we will, uh, I, I hope it helps you to, uh, to prepare the best for the roundtable number two, uh, for the one who are registered at, at roundtable number two. Um, we'll send you afterwards, uh, for the, again, for the people who are going to attend the, the event on 3rd of July, we'll send you some materials in the, if you want to go deeper in the subject, so readings, videos, and podcasts if you want to... Uh, to, uh, to check it out, check it, check it out. And uh, maybe uh, Tanya, you want to, uh, to
to tell us a, a last word about about the webinar and, and the GSC? Uh, we can't wait to, to meet you in uh, less than a month now and uh, yeah. meet the experts in, uh, in real life as well. Cool. So be ready and uh, let's meet in a, in a month. Bye bye.